Hi, and welcome to another Type With Me. In this week's episode, I want to talk about Zot. So, let's see what Zot is about, right? Well, if you say Zot, of course you think of Kryptonite and of Smallville characters or of Superman, DC, right? But that's not what I want to talk about. But it's still very cool. I also like superheroes. Instead of talking about General Zod, I'm gonna talk about this one, right, on GitHub. It's a TypeScript first schema validation with static type inference. It also has a website where you have a lot of information on it. You see also that it has a logo and that logo maybe, yeah, refers a little bit to words or think, let you think a little bit uh, to, to the, the Superman, uh, uh, symbol right that you see right here and and it's very clever I guess that the creator of the library uh, is a fan of DC and of Superman and maybe it's also because he thinks okay if I create a library maybe it will be something with superpowers so I name it not Superman because that would be too obvious but I name it Zod so one of the great things of this library is that it's uh, not depending on any other libraries, right? So it's very easy to install. You can use it in the browser, in Node and in Dino. So for this, I'm going to use it in Dino to show it to you what its superpowers are and how you can use it in your own application. The main thing that I think has the biggest superpower of it all is if you want to go and uh, grab data from an REST API and you don't have control over this REST API, you can just do some uh, yeah, schema validation on top of that or you create your own REST API in Node and they can send you some data. Well, then you can also use it like this. If you get the wrong data there, then yeah, you can throw an exception, right? You can not do that with typings. That's a little bit of a pity, right? And that's why I think this is a great use case for you guys to start using a schema validator or schema validation. So, like you can see, it can also very easily validate primitives. So here I expect that it, we get a string, that it's non-empty. So, yeah, there needs to be a value into it. And that value needs to be minimum 8 and maximum 32, right? So here you see that I give a string and it's empty. And yeah, we'll see how it will react, right? So if I do now this... It downloads everything and then you see here that we get as a zot error z o d error right so you see here what the error is it's too small and it's too small must contain at least one character must contain at least eight characters and i think uh, non-empty is just that it needs to be minimum one right um I think if I just remove it like this, you will see that it also gives me an error. But that we then get one error back. All right. If I now do this, blah, you will see that we still will get an error because it's just three characters and not what it should be. Now, if I execute this one, you will see here that we get this should be okay. And we don't get an error again. So, I think that's great. It helps you with validating certain values that you get from somewhere, right? When you want to validate a object, you can do it very easily uh, with this, for example, right? We have a object and in that object we have an email we have a name we have a phone number and that email needs to be of type email right and the name needs to be of type string and the phone number needs to be a number so um, 
and then I'm going to parse it, right? And here I have something like const result, and then I say user.parse, and I have an email and a name. I don't have a phone number. And then you will see here that you'll say, hey, that's required. I don't know uh, if I can do something like this, dot um, optional, right? And now it should be optional. So if I now execute it, you will see here that we have a result. If I now do something like this, console.log result. You will see that we get a result because we only expect to have an email address and a name and a phone number is optional, right? So I think that's really great. You can very easily, um, yeah, parse uh, things and, and have some kind of validation. For example, this one yeah, would give me an error that, um, yeah, it's not a valid email. Eh? You see here message invalid email. And that is something that you can also very easily use in your application to say, hey, this is not a valid email address. Please provide a correct format for an email. So imagine that you want to merge schemas. You can very easily do so. We just have something like a hobby and we can merge that and then use that to parse our result, right? Again, we build up a const hobby, hobbyist, right? It merges user with hobby. And now we can do something like this. Hobbyist. Another thing that we could do is save bars, for example. You need to know that when we do parse, it will just throw you an exception. When we do save parse, it just provides you um, uh, the result. And that could be something like this, eh? a phone number, an email, a name, and a hobby name. But it could also be, yeah, the error that's in there. So um, if we now save this and we execute this, you will see here that he throws not an error, but he just provides you with the error object that's in the result, right? So here you see success false. Now if we go here and do something like this, hobby name running, for example, I'm going to save it, right? I'm going to execute it again. And then, of course, you see here, we still have false because it's an invalid email. So that's also great. Uh, info, info add, whatever. Um, Now you see here that we have success true and our data, which is that that passes through our validation, right? And this could help you to see, okay, the parsing succeeded or not, and I can have the data that's inside it, or I can just, yeah, do something with the error that's inside it as well. The other thing that you could do is just create a try catch around it and then use this at the the zot error. Yeah, I have, I, have a, I have a problem with pronunciation for that library, but you know what I mean. You can really do a lot of great things with it, in my opinion. So this is a brief introduction, uh, a little bit of a play around with what the capabilities are of that library to do schema validation with it. And I think it's a great one uh, to use into your projects, either in, for example, an Angular TypeScript project or in your Express.js um, 
application. Uh, it's TypeScript uh, by default, it's TypeScript native, but you can also just use it into your own JavaScript uh, application, then you don't have the type safety there, but that's something for you to decide. But again, great library for schema validation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. I hope you're going to use this library in your projects and see you next time.